We are in our second week of our theme this month, which is holiness. Tell your neighbor, holiness. holiness. This month is about holiness. We want to be holy in everything that we do. Amen. So the Bible commands us to be holy. So last week we learned about um, that without holiness, nobody will see God. And we learned what that meant, what it means to be holy, to chase after holiness, that it's your mindset. It's not about what you do on the outside that makes you holy. But holiness is a thing of the heart. It's a thing of the mind. It is a thing that you, you, you strive for internally, and it comes out outside. Amen. So today, the title of this message is, Don't Get In My Way. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, don't get in my way. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor, don't get in my way. Tell the chair, don't get in my way. Nothing is going to get in my way this year. Nothing will get in my way this year. Um, and the reason for that is because as a, as a believer, as Christians, I believe that we are, sometimes we, we've let go of the aspect of holiness. We've forgotten what it means to be holy. And like I said last week, we don't strive for holiness anymore. We don't focus on holiness anymore. So we, 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 we enter into so many relationships, so many different things, and holiness is not a priority. But in 2024, this year, you are declaring over yourself, don't get in my way. Because I need, and what I'm about to teach you today will show you why holiness is so important in your life and why you need to strive for holiness. So don't get in my way. So the message today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 1. Just one verse again. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. And just to give you a background about this, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, Paul was writing to a church that was um, very bad, to say the least. There were so many things going on in that church. There were so many bad things, immoral things, um, um, uh, groups and cliques and all kinds of things. Someone would say they were for Paul. Someone would say they were for Apollos. So Paul was writing in anger. It was even a point where he told them to even kick one of the members out because of something that was going on that was very, very bad. So in throughout Corinthians, Paul always reminded them, encourages them to strive for holiness. And he uses like, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a temple of the God. You are this, you are that, to encourage them to strive for holiness. And in this particular verse we're focusing on, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, this is what he says. This is what he said. And I want you to write this down, write this verse in your heart, in your mind, so you understand what God is trying to say to you today. He said, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything. Say everything. Everything, everything that contaminates body and spirit. Perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Out of reverence for God. There's a, a, a quote that I had. The school had dismissed for the day. And a, a couple of teenage daughters, they, um, they went into their father's office. Their father was a governor, a very big, important person. And they went into, uh, during the summer break, because there was a trend that was going on where they do something with their hair. They called it bobbed hair. And it was becoming very fashionable for young ladies. Every young lady was dressing like that in that time. So the governor did not want his girls to have that kind of hair. And on that particular day, they were both begging their dad for permission. One of them said, oh, dad, but everyone is doing it. Everybody is doing it. And the governor said to his daughters, whose daughters are you? Hallelujah. He said, whose daughters are you? After hearing them acknowledge him, he said, sure, you are the daughters of the governor. You do not follow the styles. You set the styles. You don't follow what people do because you are the daughter of a governor. And so sometimes Christians, we have forgotten ourselves. And we want to follow the things of the world, not knowing that as a Christian, you're supposed to set the standards. There's so many times Christians want to follow worldly trending things. When as Christians, we should be setting what's trending in the world. But we want to follow everything. So do you know whose daughters you are? Do you know whose sons you are? Hallelujah. And Paul is saying something to the believers here. To in Corinth. And today I want to talk to you about the action of holiness. Last week was the pursuit of holiness. Today is the action of holiness. Holiness 
is the vehicle to the delivery of your promise. Holiness is the car that will take you to receive and to see your promise in God. Hallelujah. So he reminds them that therefore, since we what? Since we have these promises. So that means that you have a proper reminds the promises of God over their life. So that they know who they are. Paul was reminding the church that, hey church, you have so many promises in God. So when you reach chapter 6, he tells them that God has heard you and given you salvation. He tells them that God will dwell with them. God will walk with them. God promotes and will protect them. That God will receive them. That God will answer their prayers. God will bless them. And he uses Old Testament references to show that they, they are promised and they are blessed. And they have so many things over their life. So many promises. Hallelujah. And there are people in the Bible that had promises of God over their life. Joshua had the promise of God over him. To lead the people to the promised land. God revealed to me after Moses that I said, Joshua, I have now chosen you. You are going to be the leader that will lead my people to the promised land. Joseph had the promise of God over his life. A promise of what? Of divine promotion. Divine promotion. Joseph had a dream. And in his dream, all his brothers were worshipping him. And that was a symbol, a symbol from God that God was about to promote Joseph and bless Joseph. So there's a blessing over Joseph's life. Israel was, uh, had a blessing and a promise of God over them. God had chosen out of all the nations Israel from the beginning to be God's nation. And God had commanded them to be different because there was a blessing and promise over their life. Hallelujah. And I want to remind you that as a believer, you have the promise of God over your life. You, there's, a, there's a specific promise over you. There's a specific promise over your life, over your marriage, over your destiny, over everything. God, God wants to bless somebody here. God wants to elevate you. God wants to promote you. God wants to lead you to new heights, new glory. God wants to fill you with, with all kinds of blessings. He promises to deliver you. He promises to direct you. The Bible says that I will direct you and I will show you the way to go. The Bible says that I will protect you. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High, he shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to him that God, God, God will just cover him. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And I will reveal my secrets to them. So, so God has so many promises for people. You will be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, what God has started in you, he will complete it. God is worked up. So there's so many blessings. There's so many power. There's so many things inside of you. Hallelujah. Say, I have the promises of God. I have the promises of God. And the good thing about the promise of God is that they are all fulfilled in Jesus. So Paul said, but as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Sylvanius and Timothy, was not yes and no. The promise of God is not by yes or no. Yes or no means that maybe it will happen. Maybe it will not happen. Hallelujah. But Paul is saying that that is not the promise of God over your life. Hallelujah. But in him, in Jesus, say in Jesus, all the promises of God are yes. Hallelujah. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So all the promises of God is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So when I have Jesus, the promises of God, when God tells me that he will bless me, it's not about maybe or no or yes or whatever. But in Jesus, it is always yes. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, it is always yes. In Jesus, it is always yes. And in him, it is amen. That means I agree that I will be the head. I agree that I will be promoted. That I agree that I will be blessed. I agree that my children will be blessed. I agree that everything I touch will be blessed. I agree. Because the promises of God are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So there's the promise of God over your life. So Paul, there's the, the promise of, of, of salvation. God has given you a promise of salvation. So he will give you eternal life, free of charge. You have eternal life in you right now. He tells the believers that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. God said that then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. You have the guarantee of, of, of God hearing your prayer. That I can go into the, bold, the, the throne room of grace, 
that I may receive, I will receive help in my time of need. You have promises of peace. You have promises of all kinds of things in Christ. So that's what Paul was reminding the believers that since you have these promises, hallelujah, and promises, and all the promises, holiness is required. Because the promise is given through him who is holy. The promise of God over your life. Holiness is required because the one that gave you the promise, the one that, did, that will do it, the one that will accomplish that promise, he is holy. Like I said last week, that God is holy. That means he is different. He is separate from creation. It's a quality of God. So the one that's going to do everything is holy. And if he's the one that is going to do everything that is holy, then what do you think you need to do? And when you read the Old Testament, every promise in the Bible, holiness was a requirement. He said to Joshua, if you what? If you will listen. If you obey. He says to Moses, if you obey me. He says to Israel, if you obey me. There's always a requirement to the promise of God. It's not automatic where you just receive it and then you start walking it. No, because God, the one who is giving you these promises, he's what? He is holy. And everything that you need for this promise to come to pass is through Jesus. You need him to do the thing. Let me show you. Yes, it's God. Everything has to be through God. The Bible says, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good work. So it is God that works in you. To achieve that promise. For that promise what? To come to pass. It is God. You do everything through God. Paul says what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through myself. No. I can do all things through the world. No. I can do all things through Christ. And the Christ that calls me, he is holy. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Apart from God, you can do nothing. Said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And that is why I'm telling you today that holiness is so important if you want to see your blessings. Because without God, you can do nothing. And God is holy. So if you want to live a life of unholiness, you will not be able to achieve it. Paul said, there's no fellowship. And that's why he was telling the, the, the Corinthian believers, what fellowship has darkness with light? Because some of them were living the kind of life that would be ashamed to even talk about. He said, there's no fellowship there. There's no bond there. There, 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 there. There's nothing there. And yet you are chasing after these things. So the promises of God, you receive it by faith, but you achieve it through holiness. Say holiness. holiness. Hallelujah. So you have these promises. Since we have these promises of God, what does he say next? Since we have these promises of God, let us purify ourselves. I want to show you something. So let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. See, I'm not trying to get you to be perfect. This church, I don't want, I'm not expecting perfection. Nobody's perfect in this room. Hallelujah. But I want you to get to the mindset where you hate sin. You hate sin so much that when you see it in yourself, you cry every day for God to help you. You hate sin so much every time you commit it, you are, you are so ashamed and guilty, and guilty that you go to the throne room of grace and receive help. You, you, you hate sin so much, you hate it within yourself that it makes you sick, it makes you cry. That even the thought of you sinning makes you shiver. And what happens when you have that mindset, you see a change. Hallelujah. There's so many Christians that don't hate sin. We tolerate sin. We let it come into us. We think it's okay. But as a believer, you have to hate sin because God hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin because it separates you from God. It stops your blessings. It stops your progress. So you have to hate sin like God hates sin. Hallelujah. Look at these two things. These two uh, uh, glasses of water. Which one are you drinking? The clean one. Which one are you using to cook? The clean one. Which one are you using to bath? The clean one. Which one are you using to, do, to make food for your children? The clean one. So none of you want to use that dirty one, but yeah, you're expecting God to use you when you are walking in unholiness. 
Hallelujah. He said, get rid of everything that contaminates your body and spirit. So there are things that can contaminate you as a believer. And the problem with this is, and this is not about salvation, you are saved. But this is about you receiving the, and walking in the promises of God and experiencing God like you've never been before. So, what, so he said, purify anything that contaminates your body. And there are things that contaminate. And the word contaminate here, the Greek word means to stain or to defile. And some of the Corinthian people, they had defiled themselves. They had contaminated themselves. Do you know what they were doing? Some of them were sleeping with their, 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 um, uh, their, their dad's wife. Their dad, so their stepmother. Some of them were just doing all kinds of things in the church. And they were not ashamed. They weren't ashamed. And Paul was saying that you are contaminating your body and your spirit. And they were very, they were still trying to be idolatry people. So they were, they were trying to follow idol worship and doing the things that the world was doing. And they had crept into the church. And Paul was writing to remind them that you are contaminating your body and your spirit. And you have the promise of God over your life. And then you are expecting God to use you when you are contaminated. What happens if, we, if you were left with just that dirty water? What would you do? You then have to um, uh, maybe boil it, do all kinds of things. So it slows your progress in the Lord. It leads you to missed blessings. Hallelujah. So many times you miss your blessings because of contamination. You miss your blessing. And sometimes you go and you pray, oh, delay and spread. No, no, the delay is coming from you and the contamination that is in your body and your spirit. Because what I have to do now when you are contaminated is I now have to put you in hot water. I have to then recycle you. I have to do all kinds of things. Whereas if you were like this, all I have to do is just use you to cook. So you are slowing your own progress. And sometimes you don't see the blessings of God is because of what you have allowed in your life. What you have allowed in your mind. What you have allowed in your body. And that is why you're not seeing the power of God in your life. Hallelujah. So when contamination comes, it becomes the friction that slows your usefulness, causing missed blessings. And you contaminate your body and your spirit in so many different ways. People are contaminating themselves. There's a young woman who's chasing somebody's husband. Someone is married, you know that this person is married, but yeah, you're chasing after that person. And you're trying to take that man. And then you come to church the next day, oh God, where's my blessing? Where's my blessing? You are contaminated. Hallelujah. There's a man, a married man, chasing after a young woman. A young woman, just, you are married, you, you have a vow, you have, you have devoted yourself to one woman. But yeah, you go in and chase another, uh, another young girl. And God is just there. And what you, what you don't realize is that you are contaminating yourself. So then what happens is that you are praying and nothing happens. Then all sudden things just come into your life. Sicknesses come into your life. All kinds of things come into you. Problems come all over the place. And you think, God, where are you? It's because you are not being useful anymore. You, your progression has slowed and you're being contaminated. There's all kinds of lustful things in men and women these days. We've all been there. Revelry, partying, all kinds of things, lustful things. There's, when you go into the world, when you go into Reading Town Center at the night, when you go into all kinds of people are just doing whatever they want. Like I said yes, last week, even in relationships these days, we don't revere holiness. We don't care about holiness. We just do whatever we want. Whatever our flesh wants to do, that is what we do. And every time you are doing that, it is not me, but God is saying you are contaminating your body and spirit. Hallelujah. When you are someone who hurts and abuses people, you're always hurting someone, you're also abusing them. It's not just sexual morality. There's abuse of power, abuse of authority. When you are abusing people, hurting people, cheating people, all of these things, you are contaminating yourself. When you are causing all kinds of arguments and you are walking in pride, you are contaminating yourself. But I want to tell you that everyone that had the promise of God over their life, Everyone that had the promise of God of their life, if it was not for holiness, they would not have seen the blessings. Let me show you. Let me show you. So he said, but Paul said, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us what? Purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. 
every single thing. I want to show you. Look at this. Look at this. Joseph, I told you, he had a promise of God over his life. But the promise was what? Promotion. God was about to promote Joseph and bless him. And, and, God, and, and, and he, his brothers sold him to slavery. And that was a very difficult moment. And then uh, Potiphar had mercy on him and brought him into his house. And so Potiphar blessed uh, uh, Joseph and promoted him into all kinds of things. And he was in charge of all the house. So, so, so the promotion was happening. But that wasn't the ultimate goal. See, sometimes God blesses you a little bit and you think that is where you need to be. No, no, no. That's just the beginning. So, so Joseph was not satisfied because he knew that this small promotion was a step to where God actually wants me to be. Hallelujah. There's a greater glory to come. But the problem is that the Bible says that Potiphar's wife started lusting after Joseph and said, Joseph, come and sleep with me. Come, come, come. Let's, let, let's just do something. My, my, my husband goes away and he, he doesn't come back. Nobody cares about it. Just come. You are in charge. You can hide. You, can, you, can, you know what, all the secrets of the house. Just come. Let us do it. Nobody will catch us. Hallelujah. But, but, but Joseph understood that the promise of God, the, the, the car that's going to take him there was holiness. Hallelujah. He knew that I have to be holy. Otherwise, it would delay my blessing. It would delay my, my, my prosperity. It would delay the thing that God has in store for me. So what did Joseph say? He said, and, but Joseph refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me. But you, because you are his wife. How can I do this wickedness and sin against God? How can I do this? There's a promise of God. That's what I'm telling you. Don't, don't get in my way. Don't get, because if you're not careful, there are Potiphar's wives that will get in your way to try and stop your blessings. Hallelujah. To try and take you away from the purpose of God. Say, so how can I do this wickedness? And sin against God. Because God is the one who's carrying my blessings. God is the one who's going to carry my promise. God is the one who's going to bless me. God is the one who's going to promote me. How can I contaminate my body and stop the Holy God from blessing me in my life? Hallelujah. And if Joseph, just imagine, just imagine, if Joseph just said, you know what, I'm going to sleep with you. You know what would have happened? He would have just stayed in that house. And it would have been going well for a year or two, they would have been, he would have been doing it, doing it, doing it, and then one day Potiphar will catch him and then throw him out. He would not have gone to prison to meet Pharaoh's servants, but he would have gone for another direction. And so the blessings of Joseph would have been delayed. Hallelujah. And sometimes, and, and, and the, the minute he slept with Potiphar's wife, everything would have been fine. He said that when you sin, God doesn't judge you straight away. No, no, you don't see the, the consequences straight away. It seems fine for a while. It seems good for a while. It seems lovely for a while. But what you don't know is that you have contaminated yourself and it's taking you away from the promise of God. Hallelujah. But the moment Joseph said no, what happened? He even pushed the promise further and he was sent to prison and Pharaoh's servants came there and God blessed him. Hallelujah. When you, when you are serious about holiness and you put God first and you push for holiness, God will promote you at the right time. God will bless you at the right time and nothing will be able to stop it. Nothing will get in your way. Nothing will stop you because you have made holiness your main goal. Hallelujah. Shout holiness. My God. Same with Moses. The Bible says that by faith, Moses, when he had become of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction. Every time you say no to sin, you are suffering affliction. Suffering affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. You enjoy it, but it is passing. It is pleasurable, but it is passing. And all it takes is that one day, the, the woman who chased somebody's husband, all it takes is that one day, but will just catch you. And you just spoil yourself. Hallelujah. So you need to, we, need to, we need to understand the danger of sin. I want to tell you, sin is very dangerous. I'm not expecting you to be perfect, but like, like I said, I want you to hate sin. Hate it in yourself. If you struggle with sin, just hate it. Because the more you hate it, the more God you, you, you will strive to change. And God will just work in you. And so you will see it. Hate sin. 
Because sin, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares. Sin, sin entangles. That means it binds you. Sin corrupts you. Paul says that do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good character. If you are always in the company of sin, you'll be corrupted. If you're always around friends that are sinning, you'll be corrupted. If you're always around people that don't fear God, you'll be corrupted. So you have to change your environments this year. You have to change your friends this year. You have to change the people you talk to this year. Because if your friends are always doing things that's not good with God, you'll be corrupted and it will corrupt you. Sin is very deceitful. Sin is very deceitful. Paul says, the Bible says, but exhort one another daily. What is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. It's deceitful because you won't see the consequences until it is too late. Hallelujah. You won't see the consequences until it is too late. So contamination, anything that contaminates your body and spirit, you have to cleanse it. You have to wash it. And that's why Paul was calling for, for you to be aggressive. When, you are, when anything that will lead you to sin comes in your way, tell them, don't get in my way. When any guy that is married comes in your DM, don't get in my way. When anyone that is trying to get you to sin comes to you, tell them, don't get in my way. Hallelujah. Because I am on a mission. I am on a mission of God. There's a promise I am carrying. And if you want to get in my way, be aggressive to them. Insult them if you have to. Because the, 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 you insulting them will save you from them harassing you. Do whatever you can. Kick them away. Block them. Say block them. Amen. Hallelujah. Block and delete. Anything, just block and delete. And you tell them, don't get in my way. Because I don't want to be contaminated. I don't want to be to, to be to be dirty. God is working something in me. So I don't want you to get in my way. Hallelujah. Say, so don't get in my way. So he encourages them to, to perfect holiness by cleansing. Say, so cleanse yourself from anything that contaminates body and spirit. Anything. Anything. And there are two types of cleansing that he's talking about. The first cleansing is done by you. The first cleansing, it is done by you. And the first cleansing is a separation. That's how you cleanse yourself. Because in the Old Testament, the Bible says that everyone that was dirty or unclean, because God put a lot of laws and requirements. If you touch a dead person, if you did this, if you did that, you were unclean. And what you had to do when you were unclean is you had to go outside the camp and wait outside for a certain number of days until you were clean, and then you will come back into the camp. Hallelujah. So God was showing them something. And he said this in um, um, uh, Deuteronomy, he said, For the Lord your God works in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. Because he know, they knew that the moment God saw anything unclean, God will separate himself from him, from them, and they will not see the power of God. Hallelujah. So, so what they had to do was you have to separate from anything that was unholy. And that is the call of God over your life. Anything that is unholy, you cleanse yourself. You wash yourself spiritually by separating from it. Hallelujah. Anything that will bring an argument, you just step away from it. Anything that will lead you to sin, just step away from it. That's what the Bible said. If your right hand causes you to sin, what do you do? Cut it off. If your eyes cause you to say, what do you do? Pluck it out. So you separate yourself by separation. Any unholy alliance, I separate myself from it in the name of Jesus. Because of the promise of God over my life, I separate. And when you separate spiritually, what you're doing is you are cleansing yourself. You are cleansing. It's like putting the dirty water in, uh, just boiling it and re 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 redoing it again. So every time you step away from negative people, you step away from the world, you step away from lust, you step away from all kinds of things, you are washing yourself. That is what the Bible means by cleansing. So everything that will contaminate my body and my spirit, I have to what? Separate from it. Hallelujah. Separate yourself from it. 
Separate. And that's what God says. Depart, depart. Go out from them. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from them in the midst of being here. Be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. He said, depart, my people. Be very serious when it comes to dealing with sin or anything that can lead you astray. Be very serious. Just run away from it. Joseph ran away from Potiphar's wife. He ran from that house. You have to run because of the promises over your life. Because of what God wants to do in your life this year. Because of the blessing that is coming your way this year. Run away from anything that will contaminate your body. Hallelujah. And when you do that, God then will do his bit. Because you're not perfect. All you're doing is you are separating yourself. You are trying to be better. And then what God does, God does the spiritual cleansing. God does the other cleansing. Because God cleanses those who strive for holiness. You see that? You separate yourself will not make you holy. But as you are doing it, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the second type of cleansing. So every time you are stepping and you're separating yourself and you're doing your part, God is doing his part by cleansing you spiritually and keeping you pure. Hallelujah. So that, that is how God works. And he does it also through the blood. The Bible says, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternity Eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Cleanse your conscience. So God will do the spiritual cleansing. All you have to do is separate yourself. Hallelujah. Just separate yourself. This year, separate yourself. This year, take yourself, your life very serious. Your spiritual life very serious. Your mind very serious. Don't allow anything to come into your body and your spirit. Don't allow any negative thing to come into your body and your spirit. Because of what? The promises of God over your life. And you do this through one thing, which is the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Fear of the Lord is what promotes the pursuit of holiness. So Paul said that, that, therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. So you are chasing holiness because of the fear of the Lord. So when you fear God, you are always striving for holiness. And it will lead you to maturity. Perfect holiness means, the word perfect means mature. So you become a mature person in Christ. You master the art of living holy. It will be difficult when you start. It will be hard to separate yourself from friends. It will be hard to give up certain things. But as you continue to do it, and when the fear of God is in you, it will push you to chase holiness. And that is what will help you to be mature. Hallelujah. And when the fear of the Lord is in you, you will stay in Christ. You will stay in Jesus. And this is what God said, promise. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Hallelujah. May the fear of the Lord fill your hearts this morning. May the fear of the Lord fill your body this morning, that you will remain in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And when you fear God, you will be blessed. When you fear God, you will be blessed. Because the Bible says that the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his mercy. When you fear God, you are blessed because he knows that you care. He knows that you love him. He knows that you are trying. He knows that you are pushing. He knows that you are fighting for him. He knows you're doing everything you can. And when you do that, he will reveal himself to you. Hallelujah. May God reveal himself to you this morning. May God reveal himself to you this morning. May the promises of God over your life come to pass. Every promise come to pass.
May the blessing of promise of Joseph come over your life. May God elevate you in the name of Jesus. May God promote you in the name of Jesus. May God lead you to your destiny helper in the name of Jesus. May God perfect what concerns you in the name of Jesus. May God work in you, work in you um, to bring about what he has planned in the name of Jesus. May every plan of God concerning your life this year come to pass in the name of Jesus. May God bless you, but may God help you to be holy. May God keep you holy. May God cleanse you. May God give you the revelation of who you need to separate yourself from. May God give the revelation of what you need to stop doing. May God reveal himself to you out of the fear of him, hallelujah, that you may be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you know whose children you are? You don't follow the trend. You set the trend. Hallelujah. Be on your feet and let's pray. Be on your feet and let's pray. Be on your feet and let's pray.